Well, what's up again there guys, Brian here at 3TG, here bringing you another awesome rankings video to share with you guys today. Now, as requested by you, the viewers, today I'll be sharing with you my personal ranking, going from worst to best of all of the entries in one of my all-time favorite PlayStation exclusive franchises, that being infamous from sucker punch now before we begin i'd just like to remind all you guys if you could please press that subscribe button so you can keep track of me and all my future projects and don't forget to press that notification bell so you'll know right when these videos will be uploaded and also don't forget that i'm still doing a promotion for one of my favorite video game online clothing stores that being insert coin and if you actually use the code 3tric20 on all of your products you'll get 20 percent off and I'm like, why wouldn't you? They have a lot of great product. And to get 20% off on all your orders, I mean, heck, who would want to pass that up? Now, before we jump into this list, as you can see, I had to get all decked up with my current prototype Colmograph cosplay that I'm currently working on. I mean, I had to you know, get this shirt, which is really hard to find. Obviously, I get my sling, which comes with the collector's edition of Infamous 2. And what Infamous 2 Colmograph cosplay would be perfect Without obviously the amp, which I have actually built this one myself with the help of my dad when he was alive. And I gotta say, it's going pretty well. I just gotta add a couple little things. I think it'll be perfect to show off at some future conventions. So, with that out of the way, let's start off with the first and worst entry in the Infamous lineup. Now again, I don't think any of these games are bad, but I think that this first entry is just sadly probably the most unnecessary entry in the franchise. So, let's start off with number five. Lowest on my list has to go to Infamous Festival of Blood. Now its spot on this list has really nothing to do with the actual presentation of the game itself, but more based on its relevance when compared to the rest of the entries on this list. Festival of Blood plays out as more of a non-canon what-if scenario that has Cole McGrath being turned into a vampire and him having only one night to kill a powerful vampire called Bloody Mary before she gains complete control of his soul. Now, Festival of Blood should by no means be seen as a cheap knockoff of Infamous 2, because there is certainly enough diversity here that allows it to stand on its own. Despite the game being taken place in the city of New Marais, the game does take place during a certain festival called Fire Night, and the city is transformed pretty well visually. Cole is given a new weapon, a new set of powers, and a new enemy variety to battle against that is significantly different than what you would expect from Infamous 2. So while it does feel different, there is enough here that is somewhat similar that anyone who is a fan of Infamous 2 can easily pick up and adjust to its differences. My biggest criticism of Festival of Blood is that I feel that with the tone being so heavily focused on horror, it makes it feel very out of place when set alongside the rest of the entries in this franchise. And when you put into effect that this game is attached to Infamous 2, it simply doesn't add anything that is already set up. No character is developed, nothing happens here in this installment that adds to anything that we already know, and it really is perhaps the one entry that if no one decided to play, that you're ultimately not missing anything that is necessary. So if you happen to have already downloaded this, or can find some way to download it on your PlayStation 3s, then go right ahead. But you're not going to hear from me that this is a game that you really need to go out of your way to play, because I just don't think it's necessary, which is why I place it lowest on my list. Number 4 on my list has to go to Infamous First Light. Now, First Light manages to pull off the one thing that Festival of Blood couldn't do, and that's be relevant to the official timeline of the series. First Light serves as a prequel to Infamous Second Son and follows the character Abigail Fetch Walker as she recounts the events that led to her brother's death along with her time being in the custody of the DUP. Now, when compared to Infamous Second Son, First Light does a great job at giving you a familiar feeling but having enough variety and elements to make it feel fresh. When it comes to the actual gameplay style itself, if you had any sense of enjoyment playing with the Neon Powers when you were playing as Delson, then playing as Fetch will feel very familiar. However, she does have a number of unique attacks and special abilities that does grant her some variety when compared to Delson. The enemy variety is more or less the same here with a much more heavier focus on gang members instead of DUP agents. With the highlight of the game for me being the story itself, as diving into Fetch's backstory does nothing more but enhance my interest in understanding of the character of her backstory that was only quickly hinted at in Second Son, 
and in my opinion, First Light is the perfect example of how side games and popular franchises should be handled, and this entry is absolutely something I recommend you go out of your way to play. Number three on my list is going to go to Infamous Second Son. Now, having a game focus on a character that is not the main protagonist of the franchise up to this point would undoubtedly be pretty tough of a challenge for any studio to handle. But though this is without question the weakest installment amongst the three primary games, I think that it does do a great job at adding new elements both story-wise and game-wise. The story this time around follows the character Delson, who has the power to absorb the power of other conduits and finds himself going head to head with the DUP, which was formed after the events of Infamous 2. Delson is a far different character than Cole McGrath, and because of this, how his morals and decisions have on the situation that deal with that happens in Seattle and his drive for vengeance can cause him to become a far darker character than Cole ever could have been. By giving the player access to a much more diverse collection of powers than any character has had before in the entire franchise, this gives the player far more freedom to experiment on what powers are best used in certain situations and how best to switch between them and understanding the importance of each unique power is key to surviving in some of the tougher parts of the game later on. The weakest element for Second Son for me was the scale of the threat that Delson had to face, and how I felt that Augustine and the DUP forces were a bit of a step down when compared to the likes of Kessler and the Beast, and all the supernatural threats you had to contend with. But that still doesn't stop Second Son from being what ended up being a suitable ending to this franchise. Number two on my list has to go to the very game that started the franchise, and that is the very first Infamous. I think Sucker Punch really knocked it out of the park with this game because when I really think about it, thinking back all the way to 2009, I can't really recall playing anything like Infamous up to that point. The idea of playing as Cole McGrath who is granted supernatural powers and having a moral system that is built upon your actions and decisions made it a very unique experience for its time. I feel that even for today, it's really one of the best open sandbox games out there, and on top of that, it made it very fun to simply travel around and explore Empire City. Perhaps not as much fun as, say, something like a Spider-Man game, but fun nonetheless. I think the enemy variety throughout the game was very unique, as the city was separated into three sections that all had different groups of enemies that needed to be dealt with in order to make specific areas safe for the average civilian to travel around, and there were a lot of different types of missions that provided a lot of time and gameplay that was very, very fun to experiment with. And I would openly say that the main antagonist, Kessler, was very interesting and mysterious, which ultimately led to one of the best twists that I've ever seen in any game to date. If by some chance you happen to miss this back during the PlayStation 3 era, and you have a chance to play this using the PlayStation Now app, it's certainly a must-play title that really brings the kind of experience that you could have only gotten on the PlayStation. And for me personally, it is the first must-play title on this list, especially when you need to prepare yourself for the number one game on this list, which has to be... Number one on my list and the greatest Infamous game ever made has to go to Infamous 2. Like so many follow-ups to original games, Infamous 2 improves on literally everything that was presented in Infamous 1. The stakes are taken to a whole new level as the Beast appears shortly after the events of the first game and not only manages to seriously cripple Cole's powers, but manages to completely destroy Empire City at the very beginning, forcing Cole and his allies to have to flee to a different city and prepare for the inevitable rematch with the Beast. The cast of characters is greatly expanded upon, and the story has far more depth than any other installment in this franchise, bringing a kind of X-Men-like feeling to the series, with the introduction of new conduits that all have powers of their own like Coles, and with the appearance of a new deadly plague that is affecting everyone in the city, and the beast creating a path of destruction on his way to confront you, it presents some of the most difficult morality choices that you will have to make in the entire series. The amount of powers and abilities that Cole has access to this time around is greatly expanded upon, and you will certainly need them as the enemies this time around throughout Numerate easily top anything that you ever faced in Empire City. 
It all leads to an epic conclusion that, depending on whether path you chose to be a hero or a villain, will have you changing the lives of countless people, and I think that it has the kind of impact that is something you don't really see well being handled well by even some of the best AAA titles that have come out recently today. And Sucker Punch managed to handle every single department of this game very well, which ultimately makes Infamous 2 my favorite game in the series. And that does it for my personal ranking of the Infamous franchise. So now that you guys know my personal list, I'd like to know how would you rank the Infamous franchise? Share your list with me and everyone else in the comments down below. And please, if you also happen to like this video, don't forget to share it on all your social media outlets so we can spread the word and hopefully grow the channel. So with that out of the way, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any more ideas for future either ranking videos or video game topic ideas, be sure to share them with me either on Twitter, Facebook, all right here in the comment section. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I'll see you next time.